Hello there! In this video, let's talk about four free open source tools that I use and that you can use as well to build your game development career. This video is a collaboration with Nathan from GDQuest and he made another video talking about more tools and his view and, and his opinions on some of the tools that will be here as well, uh, the way that he used them, it will be quite different from what you see here. So after this video, go check out Nathan's video as well, so you can have a small sight of what you can achieve with these tools. But before we dive into the tools themselves, let's talk about what is a free open source software, a FOSS. Uh, the free word in English is quite tricky. It can mean free as in beer, like you can obtain something without having to pay for it, and it can mean free as in speech, you have freedom to work with that thing. Uh, most commonly, these softwares are provided in both ways, so you can obtain them without having to pay, and you can modify and you have some freedoms that are guaranteed to you. You can use free open source tools to build your portfolio, you can provide some work, you can start your career making some freelances using these tools, uh, some of them have some constraints that doesn't allow you to do whatever you want with, with them, which I don't think is a good practice in most of the cases. I, I like to have the most freedom I can with the tools. If you want to know my opinion on freedom and why do I only use free and open source softwares, uh, leave a comment below. I really want to expose these opinions because I think that uh, once you know them, you'll be quite impressed with the way that the world works. So it will be cool to expose these uh, this thoughts with you. So leave a comment below if you want to know more about that. But that's it. Without further ado, let's dive into the tools themselves. Alright, the first tool that I want to share with you is Inkscape. Inkscape is a vector drawing software that allows you to make any sort of vector art, graph design, graphic assets, scene composition, make a lot of path related operations, uh, vector if you want, vector effects, it is just amazing. But Inkscape has one small problem, it is kind of an old software but it is still on its alpha stages. The 0.92 version was released not so much ago so officially it's not stable yet. That's why one of the major concerns about Inkscape and one of the main source of critics is its interface. But it quite depends on the, the platform that you are using it. For Linux, I quite of like its interface. It uses GTK icons. But yeah, for Windows, for instance, it's just... No, it's just like if you are using a software for the 90s or something. I met Inkscape in college, but I wasn't good at it. Actually, in college, I wasn't good with anything, to be honest. But when I left the college and I had to make some freelancing, I picked up Inkscape because I didn't want to work with non-free open source solutions. So instead of going with Adobe Illustrator, for instance, I chose to pick Inkscape and it worked greatly for me. Today, I still use Inkscape for doing graphic design uh, freelancing. I also use it for mostly of the graphic related stuff in PigDev, for graphic design, for scene composition, I use it to make my graphical assets for games. I also use it to mock up levels, to mock up interfaces, to make, to make all of these graphic related jobs. So it's a very good tool, I use it on a daily basis, so I really recommend it if you want to start working with vector art and build your portfolio. So let's go to the next tool. So next up we have Blender and this one is a really amazing tool. Blender is a complete 3D animation solution. It provides all the tools that you need to build from the modeling to the animation to the rendering to the conceptual art to 2D uh, texturing, modeling. <laughs> I could spend a whole video just listing all the, the features that Blender has because it, it is just amazing. It is a complete solution for animation. I also met Blender for the first time in the college, but as always I wasn't good at it. Actually it was one of the tools that I was the worst. But when I met Blender, I was really amused with its Blender game engine. At, at the time I didn't know what a game engine was, but uh, when I started to see Blend game engine, I thought that it would be a very good solution for me because I wanted to make some prototypes for my work and to work on some projects with the, the college guys. I also tried 
any sort of work with Blender as well. I try to make motion graphic arts there. I try to make uh, texturing. I try to make drawing. Yeah, Blender has a, a building drawing tool as well, but it's not as good as a dedicated tool. And I also try to make some 2D animations with Blender, which I also use nowadays. I use Blender to make some uh, integration with Inkscape and Blender to make 2D animations. You can import Inkscape art in Blender and you can work on there to make the, the animations, since Inkscape is not capable of doing animation currently. But nowadays I use Blender the most to make video editing. I use it to make video editing for Big Dev, for GD Quest, and also some small freelancing as well. Okay, the next tool is LMMS, which used to stand for Linux Multimedia Studio, but now I think that it has more Windows users than Linux users. But anyway, an MMS is a digital audio workstation, or DAW for short, and it is designed to be quite similar to Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops Studio, which is its non-free counterpart. LMMS comes with all sorts of demos, presets, samples, and it also has a good range of built-in plugins, which one of them is a VST uh, interpreter, you, it is a VST host, so you can use this plugin to host VST plugins, so it's a very cool solution, it's quite like an interpreter for VST plugins. You can say that an LMMS is quite like a blender for audio, because Blender doesn't have audio solutions, you can use LMMS to compensate this and, and use both of them together. The only thing that I think that LMMS is not good at, I, I think that it doesn't actually has this feature, is to record. So you can't record uh, audio in LMMS. So you can use it with Audacity, which is another very, very good audio solution as well, and it is also free and open source. So it's a very good combo, you can you can use it. I also met LMMS in college, as everything. But this one was quite different, because back there I used Fruit Loops. So I, I was using a, a non-free open source solution back there. And my professor presented me LMMS and said, Oh, I use this as a free and open source solution for music composition. And I was like, oh, this is very similar to Fruit Loops. I think that I will start using it. So I started using it, and to be honest, I was quite good at music back that time, which is a skill that I think that I lost between then and now. But that's it. That's how I met LMMS. And nowadays, I use it mostly for music composition for my games. They are very simple music, so I think that I can make them myself. And I also use it to synthesize uh, sound effects. I use it, it's building sound effectser, which is a plugin that is a standalone solution on the internet. You can search for SFXR, so effectser, sound effectser, and you can use the web version of this plugin. But I use LMMS built-in version and together with Audacity to make some cuts and to edit a little bit, I can achieve very good sound effects for my games. I, I like it because I can keep a library of sound effects that I already make and I can make presets for next uh, sound effects. So it's a very good solution that I found to make to synthesize sound effects. And I also use it to make music composition for my games as well. So together with Audacity, which is a very, very good solution for audio as well, but it's not as good to make a music composition. It doesn't have like a piano roll, for instance. Uh, together, they make a very, very good combo to any sort of audio solutions, especially Audacity, which is very good to editing sound. So you can record sound effects and use Audacity as well to make uh, your sound effects less synthesized, so you can uh, record on a, a real footage and throw it on Audacity and edit there. So these two are the, the real go for it solutions for uh, audio in free open source world. And finally, my beloved one, Godot Engine. Godot Engine is a game engine, so it's a game development solution. And Godot specifically is a very good game engine because it provides all sorts of tools and it bundled them all together into a very good interface. So you can use Godot for animation and Godot animation system is very powerful. You can animate almost anything in Godot engine. You can use it for 3D, for 2D, for audio solutions as well. Uh, Godot audio system is very powerful, especially combined with the animation system, which 
they made a very good combo. Uh, Godot also has a building uh, scripting tool. It also has its own scripting solution, which is GDScript, which, which is a very good game design scripting uh, language. Anyway, Godot is very good at solving any sorts of game development related problems. It also integrates very well with version control tools such as Git, and it is just an amazing, amazing tool. Well, in college, as I said, I used Blender Game Engine a bit of it. I think that I used it for like one semester or something. But after that, I used Unity. And I used Unity for the rest of the college and for my first job as well. But at some point, Unity wasn't a good solution for me. I used to code it with Boo, which was a game scripting language. And well, we know how this stuff works. If people use more of one language, like C Sharp, for instance, which is a very standard uh, coding language for most of the development industry, they, they will have to make choices, right? They will have to put their work and their money and their time focus on what people are using. And since Unity was already a very spread game engine, people were searching for C Sharp solution and they focused their work on C Sharp and they dropped Boo support. So I was like an orphan back there because I didn't want to use Blender because Blender license doesn't allow you to sell the source code. And if you try to make games with Blender game engine, you would need to bundle some of the code together with your game. So you wouldn't be able to sell your game. So it was a very bad thing. So I was searching for a python -ish solution for game development. And I found out some of solutions like Panda 3D was a good one that I tried. But someone recommended me that I tried Godot Engine. And back that time, Godot interface was just awful. It, it, it wasn't good at all. I enjoyed the node system. I really, really like it. The, the node system, the scene tree and that kind of stuff. The animation system. The animation system of Godot is a good solution since its first release. But I didn't quite like it, the interface and other more issues that it had. And I was like, no, I won't use it. So I went back to, to Unity. But when I received the, the news that Godot released it, its version 2.0, I was like, okay, let's give it another try. And it's very, very different. The interface was becoming to be good. Everything was quite understandable. The, the documentation was really good as well. And I was quite getting the, the resource and the node system and how stuff worked in Godot. So I decided to try it out. So uh, when they released the, the 2.1 uh, version of Godot, they made a community game jam. And I participated in this game jam. And for the first time in my whole life, I made a game from start to finish, which is Moon Chaser. You can check it out in the link in the description, both the source code and the game itself. And I first finished my first game. And I was like, man, I never used this game engine. I tried Unity for three years and I just finished my first game from start to end. This tool has something different. I must try to understand this better because this has so much potential. And from then I just go for Godot and that's it until now. I think that Godot is one of the best game engines I can think of. And it's free, it's open source, it's very, very likable because it has a MIT license code so I can make anything I want with the code, I can sell it, I can modify it, I can contribute bad, I can contribute on my, my own version of Godot, I can pick Godot and make my own Godot engine and I can sell it. And th that's not what I make, but I can make this, I have the freedom to make this, which is not the case for instance for Blender and for sure is not the case for Unity. So, uh, as I said, Blender has a very restrict uh, code. It has problem with GPL, which is not a good license for open source solutions. So, I really like Godot. I love it. I really enjoy being part of the community of Godot Engine. And that's it. That's my four tools. Actually, five, right? I, I mentioned it some, some other. I think that I have more than four uh, tools here. If you want to know more about any of these tools, please leave a comment below. I will enjoy a lot make tutorials or tips and tricks or any sort of video for LMMS, Audacity, Inkscape, GIMP, uh, Blender, any sort of free and open source tool. If you want to know more free and open source solutions and if you want to know why I use only FOSS solutions for my work, please leave a comment below as well. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up 
subscribe as well and don't forget to go on GD Quest video as well. I will put a link in the description on the pinned comment and also on this card that is appearing on your screen on any uh, side of the screen right now. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time.